We were born with two fears only: the fear of falling and the fear of loud sound. In 1960, an experiment on six to fourteen-month-old babies and young animals showed that if they were placed on a platform where the edge is made up of plexiglass, they would refuse to step over this visual cliff for fear of falling. This is a sign that fear of falling is an instinct necessary for survival, not just for human beings but for many species. This is the same for loud sound. When we hear loud sound, we will want to duck down to protect our head, or we just want to run away. This is a typical fight or flight response. Loud sounds is a signal of potential danger, and this is why our bodies experience these responses. Then wait, if we were only born with two fears, why on earth have we heard about people who have phobia about spiders, snakes, dogs, and etc.? Well, that's because most fears are learned. If you meet someone who has a phobia about rats, it's very unlikely that he was born with this fear. Instead, he must got the fear through his experience or the environment. So wait, what happened then when we sense fear? First and foremost, we need to understand that fear is a type of stress, and when our body feels the stress, there's a type of hormone from adrenal gland called cortisol would go into the blood. Through the blood, it reaches many parts of our body. For instance, the heart rate would be increased, so that we are less likely to feel exhausted. Our lungs would breathe faster to absorb more oxygen, and the other parts of our body not extremely necessary. For instance, the reproductive, urinary, and the digestive system they would all go down to ensure that the energy is poured out on the essential part in order to survive. But once the fear is removed or faded away, our body would return back to normal, which is the state without the cortisol. The issue is because modern days we're constantly faced with fears from all kind of places. The cortisol is always there. This long-term presence of cortisol eventually or potentially would lead to physical and mental issues. So let's talk about fear. There's one very common way to distinguish fear, which is by telling if a fear is rational or irrational. A rational fear would be worrying about losing your home as you haven't been able to pay the rent. In this case, the fear is valid, and there is an actual threat that you might be losing your home. On the contrary, an irrational fear is a type of fear where the harm is barely there. Or the chances for the harm to happen are extremely low. For instance, you're having a few days toothache, and you believe that you will be killed by this. There's no evidence suggesting that, and there's no such harm really being proved. Or for this to happen is extremely unlikely. The second example would be. Failing an exam at school, and you think your life ahead is over, so you can tell the harm may not actually be there, but your body is still stressed, so the cortisol would still be present for a very long period of time because the fear might be exaggerated or imagined by yourself, and it's never there. So what happened? If we are constantly in this long-term cortisol state, as I mentioned, mentally and speaking, there will all be some negative effect on our bodies. So the takeaway from this video is, we are all a lot braver than we think. We're only born with two fears. For the rest of the fears we have got, they're all from our experience and lives. So it's very important for us to spend some time to think about why we got this fear and how shall we cope it. It's only when we can identify the source of the fear we'll be able to cope. And trust me, the best way to cope the fear is to face the fear. It may not always be easy, but there's no shortcut on the way to happiness. I trust you can do it, and I wish you all the very best health and happiness ahead. I'll see you soon. Bye.